before we begin the video, let it be known that there will be some manga spoilers, so you have been warned. Nowadays I feel like it's rare in the anime community to get a show as thought-provoking and as beautifully written as Vinland Saga. You already know the story by now. Vinland Saga is amazing! No shit! There are hundreds of videos on this platform that will tell you the same thing. Not only is it one of the best anime adaptations in years, but it's part of a group of manga that people would classify as the quote-unquote greatest manga of all time. I wanna make it clear that this isn't a deep dive or an analysis into why Vinland Saga season 2 was amazing firstly i'm not smart enough to say what i want to say properly without giving myself an aneurysm instead i'll be talking about why i love the season more specifically why i love the slave arc so much if you're looking for a more in-depth analysis on the show go watch any of the videos i've put on screen cool cool often at times whenever the topic of manga is discussed there will always be three manga that are brought up when discussing the quote-unquote greatest manga of all time berserk vagabond and vinland saga berserk is is about a guy who goes berserk, vagabond is about a guy who vagabonds, and Vinland Saga is about a man learning to let go of his hatred. Yeah, I couldn't come up with a proper joke. Shut the fuck up. To be a little more serious though, the thing I love about these three manga is how they take all three of their protagonists on journeys of redemption and self-discovery. Musashi, Guts, Thorfinn each have arcs where they have to come to terms with who they are and who they want to be moving forward. And season 2 of Vinland Saga is that arc for Thorfinn. Season 2 takes Thorfinn's character and starts to reshape and mold him into someone new. We followed this character from the first season and saw him go from this sweet innocent boy and over the course of the first four episodes we see him turn into this angry ball of hatred that only wanted to kill for the sake of revenge for the remainder of the season. Watching Thorfinn on his journey to kill Ascalad during the first season felt so heartbreaking to watch because there are moments in that season where we see how much Thorfinn hates the people he surrounded himself with and he hates the road he's walking down. There really isn't a moment in the first arc of the story where Thorfinn sees seems to genuinely be happy. I think Ascalad put it best when he said this. But he's not aware of one thing. The truth is, all of us are slaves to something. Seeing our main character become a slave to his hatred made watching season 1 feel so heavy. The first time he takes a life, seeing him betray the trust of a kind stranger, seeing his hostility to someone trying to give him food, and seeing him take orders from Ascalad just so Ascalad would honor him with a duel. All of this was for the sake of revenge, but the thing that makes it worse was that Thorfinn looked up to Ascalad as a father figure. I know it sounds insane to say that considering. Well, you know. But Thorfinn seeing Ascalad as this sort of specter of his toxic past made more sense when you consider that Ascalad also cared for Thorfinn. And this isn't the last time we see Ascalad in the story. The thing I love about season 2 is that Thorfinn isn't the same violent kid we saw in season 1. After Ascalad's death he loses his purpose. He believes that there isn't anything to live for because the drive to take revenge on his father's killer is no longer there. He becomes an empty shell of a person just living day to day day with no drive or goal or purpose. Kinda like me. Seeing his friendship with Anad develop and seeing his joy when he finally clears the land that will grant him his freedom made me so happy because Thorfinn deserved to experience happiness. That is until episode 8. Being a warrior was what you were. It's what filled your cup with purpose until it all drained away. What fills you now, Thorfinn? Nothing. I'm still a warrior. 
seeing Thorfinn hit this dude in the face didn't feel right. And I'll be honest for a second, I haven't watched a single episode of season 2 because I've read the manga but I do remember this moment very vividly and the reason I remember was because Thorfinn didn't want to resort to doing this. He felt like he had no choice and felt like there wasn't any other choice in this moment. The old Thorfinn came out and after doing this we really see the weight of Thorfinn's actions. Seeing all the dead ghosts that haunt him, the heavy burden of his killing and all the bodies he's left in his wake and how he didn't want Anar to experience the same thing just felt so gut-wrenching. The violence that was used in season 1 all culminated into this single moment and this moment is what leads Thorfinn down a road of redeeming himself. There are still moments where the old Thorfinn surfaces that appear in later arcs after this one but it's in those moments where Thorfinn breaks down and hates how easy it would be for him to return to his old ways that sticks with you. It's the moment where we see Thorfinn grapple with his guilt and ask himself if he actually deserves to be happy that have stuck with me and have stayed in my mind till this day. The fact that the name of the arc is the slave arc fits so well into the narrative of the story because Thorfinn is no longer a slave to his desire for revenge but rather he's now become an actual slave with no will or purpose to carry on. It would probably also be dumb to not talk about the inverse with how Prince Canute also grows and changes from his first season counterpart but as for someone much smarter than me to talk about so go along shoot go somewhere else. I think the true beauty of Vinland Saga season 2 is watching the growth of a character who was trapped in an unhealthy life fix himself. I know I've mainly been talking about Thorfinn throughout the video and yeah he's the main character, the story revolves around him, but I don't want to dismiss any of the side and supporting characters because they are equally as important. Anar, Leaf, Canute, Alma, every character in this arc is a central part of the story that also each have their own mini arcs that add to the bigger arc of the season. There isn't much violence in this season as opposed to season 1 because the main conflicts of the story are no longer external, they're internal. Makoto Yukimura, the author of Vinland Saga, I was scared that removing the violence in the story would probably make a lot of people stop reading Vinland Saga, but I'm glad he took that risk. Authors run the risk of losing a significant part of their audience if they take a risk this big. So much of the shows we now watch every season are jam packed with action because it's the easiest way to hook people into a story. But not every anime can stop and take a moment to just. let you feel and absorb what you're watching. I experienced this when I watched Made in Abyss, when I first read Berserk, when I watched episode 1 of To Your Eternity, and when I watched Vinland Saga season 2. Ignore all the smooth brains on Twitter who call Vinland Saga season 2 boring because there isn't much action as there used to be. That isn't the point of the story. Vinland Saga is a story about letting go of your hatred to become a better, stronger, kinder person. And my hope is that after people watch this season, they too work on doing the same thing.